All right, thank you so much. So as you are, I'm sure, aware, this is a three-hour course. We will take a break halfway through. So we're going to look at the FDA's regulations for the development of drugs, and we'll talk about their role in navigating sponsors' responsibilities for gathering that information, developing that product, putting it through that pipeline of getting it approved, working with investigators and CROs and IRBs, and we'll discuss all of those things as we move along. We're going to talk about the FDA's role in the development of the drug process, or drug development process, sorry. Look at the logic behind the drug development process. We'll talk about IND, Investigational New Drug, and NDA, New Drug Application Submissions. Talk about the basics of the clinical trial process. We'll also describe the FDA's review for those submissions, and we'll talk about three major FDA regulations, good clinical practice, good laboratory practice, and good manufacturing practice. And most of us are focused on GCP, but we have to appreciate that GLP and GMP also support good clinical practice. Without good manufacturing or good laboratory practice, let's start there, we don't know enough about our product in terms of what it might do, what it is going to do. We have to make sure that we have reached a point, as we'll see, that we are confident that it's safe enough to start testing in humans. Good manufacturing practice is a regulated side as well that talks about how that product is manufactured. But all of those come together in GCP, also regulated, where we ensure that our product is manufactured, handled, and stored in accordance with GMP, and that we are using information, everything that we know about the product up to that point, and sharing it with appropriate individuals, including the IRBs and the investigators and the potential participants. So the FDA is the Food and Drug Administration. So it is the federal government's primary consumer protection agency. It was actually founded much earlier than 1931, but we started moving in the direction of what we're gonna be talking about today in the 30s. After products were found to be contaminated or, or mislabeled, misbranded, this enforces the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. So the FDA, and this is of 1938, but developed in real time. We are seeing changes and updates as we go along and find out more about our industry. So products are required to be approved by the FDA, the types of products we'll be talking about. FDA is a public health agency. They're part of the Department of Health and Human Services. They're a public health agency focused on protecting consumers, protecting their safety, protecting their rights, protecting their well-being. So you might hear some folks talk about how heavily regulated our industry is, but it really is not when you think about it in terms, and we'll, as we'll discuss, there are a lot of different things that could be done that are not done. Maybe some would argue should be done that are not done. We don't have some of the safeguards that other countries might, but we do have some of the original safeguards and we've been building on those for a hundred years. So we look at the protection of the public's health. Right? Our products, ultimately, our goal is to get them out there and permit them to be used by the public. So FDA is looking to promote public health by reviewing clinical studies, making sure that products that go out are safe and effective. So we're gonna focus on drugs, but they do also look at food, they look at vices and biologics, cosmetics, some cosmetics, right? not all cosmetics, but some, particularly those, especially those, that are going to be tested and required to be tested as drugs. So we'll talk about those requirements and why it's so critical for us to understand what those expectations might be so that we can be prepared. So FDA's mission statement, promotion of the public health 
by promptly and efficiently reviewing clinical research, taking appropriate action on marketing of those products. Also protecting the public's health by ensuring that foods, veterinary drugs are safe and effective. Right? Medical devices and biologics would fall into this first category when we're talking about clinical research. 